Verse 33. But this shall be the covenant, the dispensation that I will make with the house of Israel. Israel being a shadow. I'm in Jeremiah 31, 33, please. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts. He would declare to us. This is the new dispensation. It was described in the Hebrew writings. It was available from before the time of Abraham. I'd like you also to go to Exodus 24 and 8. Exodus in the Hebrew writings 24 and 8 please and Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said behold the blood of the dispensation which the Lord had made with you concerning all these declarations all these things that he had declared to them The dispensation was available from then. I want you to go back to Matthew 26 with me, please. And as they were eating, Matthew 26 and verse 26, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke the bread and gave the bread to his disciples and said take eat this is my body and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave the cup to them saying drink ye all of it for this is my blood of the new testament the new dispensation which is shed for many for the freedom from the physical condition Remember, Jesus was eating the Passover meal. He was eating the meal that was described in Exodus. Yet, Jesus was saying, this is not the Passover meal, which was just a shadow. This is become now the reality, the real meal, because I am here with you. And I'm going to be drinking this wine, which is my blood, on the other side with you the next time we meet. He was saying, this is not the Passover meal, which was a shadow, but the new dispensation meal. Not the physical shadow, but the real thing. The participation of the individual in the new dispensation which began before the material creation and was in operation during the time of Abraham, which the physical crucifixion is a shadow of. It's as if they were eating a meal of Christ. It was also a shadow of Christ. Of eating and drinking Christ. The physical crucifixion had a natural time frame. It had to happen at a specific time in the history of men. In contrast to the reality it represented which existed outside of the realm of time which happened like all things that shadows represent in the realm of no time therefore it was already there before the physical creation the crucifixion like all other shadows occurred in the realm of time but represents something that happens in the zone of no time Who's still here with me? There are two components 
two elements of the new dispensation meal. There are two elements to the lamb. The meat, the flesh of the lamb, and the blood on the doorposts. Exodus 12. The bread and wine of the Last Supper. Matthew 26. The body and blood of the lamb. Christ. The flesh and blood of Jesus. John 6.54. These two components make up the new dispensation meal. These two elements are associated, are linked. You cannot separate them. If you have one, you have the other. And we were always instructed by the Lord to eat his body and drink his blood. And this indicated the association between the shedding of glory by Christ and the spiritual works that followed the shedding of glory by Christ. Who's still here with me, please? Because we're getting to the heart of the teaching. And you need, you need to prick up your ears. Christ shed his glory at the beginning of the age of the prototype, while he remained in union with the Father in the first age. He did this in order to experience our weaknesses in preparation for the spiritual creation which would take place in the age of spiritual creation, the Rima age. The purpose for Christ shedding his glory was so that he could become our prototype in the age of the prototype. That was one. The second one is, and our creator in the age of spiritual creation. Three, so that he could later become our deliverer when he connected us to that creation as we existed in this realm. Accessing the Rima works through the spiritual connection also means that we have accessed the actual suffering of Christ, the shedding of glory. Accessing the Rima works by a spiritual connection also means that we access the reality represented by the shadow of the Lord's blood used in Hebrews 9.14. When we access the blood, the shedding of glory by Christ, it is because we have accessed the spiritual works of Christ of the Rima age. It is through a spiritual connection to the spiritual works of the image that we access, that we are united with the shedding of glory by Christ. It goes without saying that we could not be connected to God in glory because we would be consumed. That is why Christ had to shed his glory. And this is why the spiritual work of Christ is linked, is related, is joined to the suffering of Christ in him having to shed his glory. That is why he always said, eat my body and drink my blood. Eat my flesh and drink my blood. It was the bread and the wine together, never separate. The shedding of glory there are two things. The shedding of glory and the spiritual works of Christ are interrelated. He had to shed his glory in order to do the works. He couldn't do the works if he had not shed his glory. Therefore, he shed his glory so that he could begin the process that ended with our spiritual creation. This is why the Lord always instructs us, repeating myself, to eat his body and to drink his blood. If you understand what the blood signifies, then it should be very clear to you what Christ's 
flesh is. If we understand, as we should have over these past few weeks, that the blood is the suffering of God in the shedding of glory, then there's only one thing left that has to indicate his body or his flesh. When he says, eat my flesh and drink my blood, we know what the blood is. And even simply by the process of elimination, if you eliminate the blood with the suffering and the shedding of glory, then there's only one thing left. There's the body of the flesh and there's the remo works. So it automatically becomes that the flesh or his body or the bread is the remo works. The fact that he did those works after he had shed his glory. It's as if we're eating the Passover meal or the New Testament meal described as the communion, the bread and the wine. You cannot eat someone when they're alive unless you're eating their flesh and drinking their blood. And that is what we do with Jesus Christ. We have to take all of him. We eat him as a meal and we take his blood and we take his flesh in a spiritual sense, not in a physical sense. The problem is those who cannot see into the eternal realm cannot accept that the crucifixion is just a shadow of the greater suffering of God in the eternal realm, which he did long before the physical creation. For those who can see, there is only bread and wine. For those who can see, there is the suffering of God in the shedding of his glory for the purpose of our spiritual creation so that we could later be added back to that creation. Who hears me today? It should be obvious to you. It should have been clear to you all along what the bread signifies, what the flesh signifies, what the body of Christ signifies. It signifies the spiritual works that Christ did in the age of spiritual creation in a collateral process that ended in our spiritual creation. Why? Why did he do it? So that when we are planted in this physical realm, he could connect us to that spiritual creation because that was his plan. That was his way to deliver us from our carnal condition, from our physical condition, from the state that God calls lack of righteousness, falling short of the glory of God. It should be therefore clear to us what Christ's flesh signifies. I would like to repeat this image for you, please. We are eating Christ while he is alive and he is full of blood. There's blood in his body and when we partake of his flesh, the blood is in it. When we are spiritually connected by Jesus Christ to the individual Rima work, to the single work that he filters knowledge of to us that we submit to. When we are connected to that one work and we are connected to Jesus Christ, that is only possible because he is in a state of suffering as the suffering servant of himself, God. You can't be connected to suffering without a connection to the works. You can't tell me you understand part of the suffering of God if you don't understand the spiritual works that he connected you to in order to heal us, in order to deliver us from our physical condition. Now, there must be in the Bible somewhere proof of what I'm saying because you know we're going to need carnal proof. You know that we're going to need physical evidence to back up what I'm saying. So where is there evidence to indicate that the bread, the flesh, or the body is in fact the Rima works? Is there any verse 
that shed lights on this issue of course there is do you think our father would leave us without protection to the lame Matthew 4 and 4 that's the first one this is what we've come for here this morning so please don't miss it I feel sorry for those who are not here to share it because they are suddenly missing something of Jesus Christ it says in Matthew 4 4 it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every all or each rima that proceeds from God in the manner of men speaking in terms that the carnal mind can understand that proceeded out of the mouth of God we know that God does not have a mouth and that he is not a man that he should have a mouth it's speaking of language the communication that is sent to us by God how in the person of Jesus Christ Jesus is the one who comes to us to save us, to deliver us. Who is still here? There are a couple of things that I need you to see for yourself. In Matthew 4 4 Christ draws a parallel between the bread and the Rima man shall not live by bread alone but by every Rima by every spiritual walk there's an image here that you need to discern that is not spelt out and in case you missed it because you're gonna tell me that it says Rima in Matthew 4 4 and not logos now a man cannot physically live without eating the bread but it doesn't say that man has to eat the bread to live it assumes that you understand that we are going to eat the bread in order to live isn't that so well in the same way the rima is the spiritual work that exists on the other side but unless we have access to that spiritual work we cannot live in a spiritual sense either who is here it should be very plain it doesn't need more explanation than that you need to understand that the Rima is in, is in essence declaring to us that without the logos without our spiritual connection to that spiritual work that exists in, in the eternal realm that we don't have a chance of this spiritual life that Jesus is offering to us in himself man shall not live by bread alone but by every rima shall man live in a spiritual sense we can therefore understand that the bread since it is symbolic of his body matthew 26 26 and since christ refers to his flesh symbolically in john 6 54 in the same way that the bread is a shadow of the spiritual works of christ of the rima age it makes it very clear in Matthew 4 4 God draws a parallel between the bread and the Rima his flesh and his blood shadow the spiritual works of the Rima age and his loss of glory necessary to implement the spiritual works of the Rima age I wonder if you're here with me let me just repeat that for you please his flesh and his blood shadow the spiritual works of the Rima age and the loss of glory by God that was necessary to implement those works I want you to turn with me to John 654 please where it says whosoever eateth my flesh or his body and drinketh my blood 
hath, experiences or possesses eternal life. And, notice the end for me, please. And I will raise him up at the last day. It's two different things. We can experience eternal life, everlasting life now. And since we are experiencing eternal or everlasting life now, therefore he's going to raise us up on the last day of our lives. Who is here? Amen. The first part of the verse is not referring to the fact of our dying and meeting Christ forever. It's referring to the fact that we can experience the abundant life right now. Who is here with me? As being different from, and I will raise him up at the last day. It's different. There are two different things here. There's a spiritual resurrection, and there's a resurrection that is going to be everlasting. There are two different resurrections referred to by God in John 6, 54. I'm not confusing Jesus and God because Jesus is God. Who is here? So in my own mind, I'm getting confused now between Jesus and God. Because Jesus is God. Who is still here? Now, if you want to have, if you want to possess, if you want to experience eternal life, if you want to experience life, which is the blessing, which is to taste the original spiritual creation, who is here? Then you have to do two things. Which is really one thing. You have to eat the Passover meal, which is only a shadow. You have to eat the new dispensation or New Testament meal. Or simply put, you have to eat Jesus. You have to eat Christ. While he has blood in his flesh, while he's a living being on the other side, while you partake of his living nature, of his spiritual nature, of his nature that gives life. And what are the two elements? The two elements are referred to by Jesus as eating his flesh and drinking his, his blood. Eating his flesh indicates that we are spiritually connected to him because we are in submission. And since we are in connection to him and the original spiritual creation which is life it is because of the fact that he shed his glory to become our prototype and our deliverer why we can be connected to those works it's all one thing it's not two that is why he keeps referring to it always in one His flesh and his blood shadow the spiritual works of the Rima age and his loss of glory that are necessary to implement the spiritual works of the Rima age. Christ says in John 6.54 that we must eat his flesh and drink his blood if we want to have eternal life. That we must be connected to the spiritual works of the Rima age by Christ which took place because of Christ's suffering if you want to experience eternal life now and later. If you look at John 6.53, please, where it says, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except or unless ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. If you want to experience the abundant life, just in case we missed it in 654. It is repeated in 653. It's very plain. It's right there. You should not and you cannot miss it. Unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. You do not taste eternal life. You do not know what the abundant life is. We will experience the abundant life if we are connected to the spiritual works of Christ, of the remage by Christ. 
therefore also accessing Christ's suffering. I'd like you also please to turn with me to Matthew 6 and verse 11. Where it says, as part of what people refer to as the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, 11, give us this day our daily bread. If you look at 4594, with me please, in Strong's. It's on this day or night, current or just past. Generally now, at present, hitherto. Who sees all of that, please? It's now, it's not daily. It's not necessarily daily. You can translate it. But we're not asking for daily bread this day we are asking for what we need now always in the present what are we asking for what's been referred to as daily 1967 in strong's please subsistence it's not daily it was translated as daily The Greek word is epiosios, subsistence, that which keeps us alive. Who's here with me? We need the bread or the rima that will keep us alive in the present, always now. We need to be seeking the spiritual connection to those spiritual works of the rima age so that we can be kept alive. Alive as in the abundant life, as in alive in the spiritual ages, alive as in alive through the experience of our true selves and being conscious or aware of our real selves. Alive through the experience of the original spiritual creation in Christ. All of this indicates that we should not ask, but be prepared. We're not asking in a physical sense, but we need to be prepared. We need to be open for this bread, this spiritual connection to those Rima works. Always in the now, in the present, all the time, at all times. It is not a matter of asking with your tongue for the spiritual connection but it's a matter of being in a state where we can be connected. Why? Because we are seeking him and we see the declaration. It's a matter of sacrificing your loss as you see Christ so that we can see him in the declaration and then submit to what he shows us. It's not a matter of asking for a spiritual connection. You can't ask for one, but of sincerely seeking Christ and then submitting this will give you the bread you don't ask for the bread you don't go to someone and get the bread you have to be in a state that says you are prepared to receive a spiritual declaration and when you submit to it you will be connected you will receive that bread that is described as daily bread I wonder if you're there with me. It's not about asking for the bread that's going to keep us alive. It's not about asking with our mouths. It's being in a state of constant preparedness, of constantly being in the spiritual cycle so that we can receive this bread who is Christ Jesus. He's the living bread. Who's here?
we need to bring our bodies into submission. <clears throat> we need to have our minds and our bodies in submission. Do you know what that means? It means to struggle with yourself, with your tongue, with your heart and with your mind. To take yourself away from the things that are damaging to you. And taking yourself towards Christ Jesus so that he can deliver you because he is the deliverer himself. No one else can deliver you. And what we are seeking is this subsistence rima, the spiritual works that keep us alive in the eternal realm. We need to continually function in the things that exist on the other side because we are submissive to God by the things that he has shown us in himself in a spiritual sense. We need this subsistence bread. We need it. All of us need this subsistence bread, which is a spiritual connection to what exists on the other side pertaining to our salvation and deliverance. If you don't receive the living bread, who is Jesus Christ, if you don't receive the bread that keeps you alive in a spiritual sense, you are dead in yourself and in your own capabilities. And you have no chance at overcoming your lust or your physical condition. All you need to do is approach Jesus Christ by sincerely and honestly seeking Him. Never mind about what the other neighbor or brother is doing. You concentrate on your own self. Bringing your own body into subjection. Being able to rule over your own body rather than it being the other way around. Your lust dictating to you what your body should get involved in. Or how your mind should function. You are the one to dictate to your mind the things that it ought to function in. We have a free will that's given to us by Jesus Christ once we are in the spiritual cycle. And we need to make sure that our will keeps us in line with God's will. We need to eat this bread every day. It's the subsistence bread. What is this bread? What is this bread? It's the flesh. It's the body of Jesus Christ. Not as he hung on the cross. But the spiritual works. I wonder if you're here with me. The spiritual works that Jesus Christ worked in the process in order to create us as an original spiritual creation as a son of God I now ask you what is the significance to the one receiving bread and wine that is physical what happens to the one who receives the physical bread and wine does he change as he eats the bread and drink the wine does he experience any change as he eats the bread and drinks the wine. However, there is a change in the one who partakes of the true bread of life and of the spiritual wine. There is a true change in the one who eats the true body and the true blood of Christ. There is a true change in the one who truly partakes of the works of Christ and of the suffering of Christ as we are connected to the original spiritual creation we experience the reversal of nature our essential nature changes when you eat bread and wine no matter what anyone says to you you do not change you remain the same and in your sin you're not righteous you're not acceptable to the father not to god not to jesus christ not to anyone in the realm that is other than the physical you're not acceptable to God when you eat the physical bread 
and drink the physical wine when you partake of the spiritual bread and wine when you partake of the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ when you are spiritually connected to the spiritual works that exist on the other side that ended in your own spiritual creation you experience the reversal of nature there is a direct change in your essential nature your loss are gone and you're in a state of functioning in the things that exist on the other side the spiritual realm becomes a reality to you it is as real as the things that you can feel that are next to you that is a change that comes about only by partaking of the true flesh and blood which is symbolic of the suffering of Jesus Christ and God and of the works that he did in the Reba age there is a true change in the one who truly partakes of the works of Christ and of the suffering of Christ by this spiritual connection and the proof of this is in 2nd Peter 1 4 the spiritual connection allows us to partake of the divine nature and of the divine growth having escaped the lack of the physical condition we become changed it is theoretical to you and academic until you experience this change when you experience your connection to Jesus Christ and to the works that exist on the other side you will feel and you will sense in your mind in your heart and in your body that your loss have been obliterated they have been erased from your condition and that your lack has turned into increase your lack has turned into spiritual blessings Praise the Lord. We're almost finished. Matthew 26, 26 to 28 speaks of the new dispensation meal. It speaks of the blood of the New Testament. which refers to the suffering of God in the shedding of glory which was the beginning of the process of the spiritual creation that ended in our spiritual creation the purpose for that spiritual creation was so that we could be spiritually connected to the original spiritual creation which is the way we can be blessed it is how God shares out his blessing to us via the spiritual connection the blood of the New Testament is what God had to do in order to bring into existence this new dispensation which was available to us before the physical creation God prepared everything and laid out everything for us for his sons before the physical creation once the physical creation was brought into being everyone who was to be saved was already created to guarantee that when we were planted in this physical existence being sent on a mission not to stay that we would be guaranteed our deliverance